good body money children. Welcome to St. Michael's e-learning classes. My name is Pasi sir and today my dear children we will be studying chapter number 8 of social science for standard 5. The name of the chapter is desert climbing. So let's read and understand this chapter. Deserts are areas which receive very little rainfall. They experience extreme temperatures which may be either very hot or very cold. This makes the land barren and devoid of any vegetation. There are many causes for the formation of deserts. They can be formed when the rain clouds are carried away from an area by winds, leaving the land dry. Desert the mountains are formed when mountains cause clouds to rain on one side, leaves the green bird side dry. This is how the Gobi Desert was formed. Deserts can also be formed due to human eye. So, deserts, they are areas which receive very little or maybe no rainfall at all. They experience extreme temperatures. Extreme temperatures means they can be either very hot or very cold. This makes the land barren and devon. Because of extreme temperatures, the lands are not able to cultivate crops and they are without any vegetation. There can be many causes for the formation of deserts. They can be formed when the rain clouds are carried away. That is, they are moved away from an area by means leaving the land dry. Deserts near mountains, they are formed when on mountains cause clouds to rain on one side, leaving the leeward. Leeward means the opposite direction from where the wind is blowing. It leaves that side dry. This is how the Gobi Desert was formed. Deserts can also be formed due to human action. That is, it because of human also, deserts can be found. The deserts are two types, hot and cold. Sahara Desert is a hot desert and Gobi Desert is a cold desert. Now we will see the distribution of deserts. Extreme climate is the main cause of desert formation. Deserts are found in all the three temperate zones of the earth. So extreme climate is the main cause. That is very hot or very cold. Climate is the main cause of desert formation. And desert can be found in all three temperate zones of our earth. Hot deserts mainly spread between 20 degree north and 30 degree north and 20 degree south and 30 degree south latitudes. They mainly lie in between or around the tropics. Moreover, they are mostly located in the western regions of the continents. Some major hot deserts are the Sahara Desert and the Kalahari Desert in Africa, the Arabian Desert and the Great Indian Desert in Asia, and the Great Australian Desert in Australia. So hot deserts they mainly spread in between 20 degree north and 30 degree north and 20 degree south and 30 degree south latitudes. They mainly they are located in or between the or around the tropics. Moreover, they are mostly located in the western part. So the hot deserts are really mostly located in the western regions of the continents. Now some major hot deserts they are Sahara Desert and Kalahari Desert in Africa. The Arabian Desert and the Great Indian Desert in Asia and the Great Australian Desert in uh, uh, Great Australian Desert in Australia. Now let's see the cold deserts. Cold deserts include the Gobi Desert in the Asia and the Patagonian Desert in the South America. So these two deserts are cold deserts. Now let's see the climate. Deserts have arid climate and receive negligible or less than 25 centimeter rain for annually. They experience extreme temperature conditions throughout the year. The highest and lowest temperatures on earth are recorded in deserts of Sahara and Antarctica, measuring 57.8 degree centigrade and minus 89 degree centigrade respectively. The diameter range of temperature in desert is vast. So when you come to the climate, you see that the deserts have very uncomfortable climate and they receive negligible or less than 25 centigrade rainfall at annually. So there is not much rain in the desert area. They experience extreme temperature conditions throughout the year. The highest and lowest temperatures of Earth are recorded in the desert of Sahara, which was the highest and lowest was Antarctica. What were the temperatures? 57.8 degrees centigrade and minus 89 degrees centigrade. The diameter range of temperature in the desert is vast. So, what is the diameter of temperature? The diameter range of temperature is the difference between the maximum, maximum and the minimum daily weather conditions. So, it is very much vast. Now, desert experience extreme weather conditions mainly due to their latitudinal location. Direction of winds, extent of mountain ranges, distance from the sea and erosion are the main factors which give rise to deserts. Deserts are characterized by sandy soil and sparse vegetation. Sand dunes are a common feature of desert landscape. 
So there is a it experienced uh, extreme weather conditions mainly because of the territorial location which you already will see. Direction of winds extend the mountain ranges distance away from the sea and erosion. They are the main factors which give rise to deserts. So they are the main cause why deserts occur. Deserts are characterized by sandy soil and sparse vegetation. Now what are the main features of deserts? They are, uh, the main features of deserts are sandy soil and sparse vegetation which means uh, no vegetation at all. Sand dunes may are a common feature of desert lands. Now we will see the next portion, flora. Deserts comprise scanty vegetation. In hot deserts, vegetation comprises thorny shrubs and bushes which are well adapted to water scarcity condition. Desert plants are characterized by large and deep roots, leathery leaves with wax coating, thorny stem, dry fruits and spines. These are mainly concentrated around the oasis. Cactus, Atapia, Boabab and Spinifex are found in the Australian desert. Date palms are widespread cultivated in the oasis of the Sahara. Sandubara, Yuka and Yosha tree are mainly found in the deserts of North America. So when you come to the door, I will see that deserts they comprise scanty vegetation. The meaning of scanty is as you will see, my it is small or if the insertion is not enough. So deserts they comprise not enough vegetation. In hot deserts, vegetation they are mainly consisting of thorny shrubs and bushes which are well adapted. Well adapted means they are very well uh, they are uh, uh, well adapted means uh, the best uh, uh, way to explain adapted means they can uh, they can make themselves uh, suitable to water scarcity condition. Desert plants are characterized by large and deep roots, feathery and leathery leaves with wax coating, thorny stem, dry fruit, uh, fruits and spines. They are very much concentrated around the oasis. Now, what do you mean oasis by children? Oasis means uh, an area of water which is coming from the underground. And because of it, we have some greenery around the deserts. Cactus, Akatia, Bobab, and Spinifex are found in Australian deserts. Date palms, they are very much uh, available and cultivated in the oasis of the Sahara. Saguara, Yuka, and Dushan tree are mainly found in the deserts of North America. Now when we have cold deserts, short shrubs and coarse grass grow in summers and moss help rich in and flowering plants are also found in these regions, that is in the cold deserts. Now let's see the next section which is fauna. The camel is a symbol of the desert. It is the most suitable means of transport and beast of burden in the desert as it is required to adapt itself to the rough condition. So it is also known as the ship of the desert. It can survive on less water for long durations. When water is available, it can store in it large volumes in its body. It has fat feet which protects the feet from being burned in the scorching heat of the sand of sand. Its heavy eye ashes and ears prevent sand and gritty materials from entering the eyes. So in the former section, we see that the camel it is a symbol of the desert. That is, it is very much known and popular. And it is a main sign and symbol of the desert. It is most suitable means of transport and beast of world. Yes, in desert it is the most common means of transport that is for traveling, people use it. And it is the beast of burden in the desert. Beast of burden means it is very much, uh, you can say, uh, um, it is the king of burden in the desert. As it remarkably adapts, adapts means it changes itself to the rough conditions. So it is known as a ship of the desert. So camel is also known as ship of the desert because it can change itself very much comfortably during the hot and extreme or cold temperatures of the desert. It can survive on less water, yes. It can also survive on less water for long duration. How? Because it has hum on its back. What it does when it, uh, through, uh, when it has hum on its back, it stores water when water is available and it can survive on less water for long duration. It also has padded feet, that is protected feet, which protects the feet from being burnt in the scorching heat of the hot sand. So you can see, my dear children, that uh, uh, God has gifted camels, and it has created camels in such a way so that it can adapt to sand. That's why camels is known as the ship of the desert. Its heavy eyelashes and ears prevents sand and heaviness. It has heavy eyelashes also, and it has ears. So it, uh, it, it, in its ears, it has heavy materials which prevent sand and heavy materials from entering the eyes and the ears. Now, interestingly, in the Gobi deserts, camel two hums are found. These 
are known as battery camels. These camels have a thick woolly coat, hairy eyelashes and ears, and two toed hoof feet. So, in the Gobi Desert, we have camels who have two humps. They are known as battery camels. And these camels may have a thick woolly coat, hairy eyelashes, and ears, and two toed hoof feet. Apart from camels, deserts are known for venomous snakes, scorpions, hyenas, deserts, foxes, and various other species. Many are the main species found in the cold desert of Antarctica. So apart from camel, we have various other animals also. That is, we have very much uh, uh, um, available. That is, uh, in, in desert, various types of animals are found, like venomous snakes, which means poisonous snakes, scorpions, hyenas, desert foxes, and many other species. Now, in the cold deserts, we have penguins, which are the main species which are found. Now, let's see the next portion. The people of the desert area, how do they live? And how, what type of people are there? Deserts are sparsely populated. They are mainly inhabited by tribal people. These include Bedouins and Tuaregs in Sahara, Peoples in North America, American Indians in Panama, Aboriginals in Australian deserts, and Banjaras in India. So, in, uh, uh, in, in deserts, we see that it is very much sparsely populated. And Sparsely means it is very much extensively populated and they are mainly occupied by tribal people. Now, what type of tribal people are, are, are available in desert areas? It is Bedouins and Tuaregs in Sahara, Peoples in North America, American Indians in Patagonia, Aboriginals in Australian deserts, and Banjaras, which we tell in, 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 in Hindi when it comes to the Indian people, Banjaras and India. They lead a nomadic and pastoral life. They mainly settle down near oases. They, their livelihood depends on logs, uh, livestock rearing, farming and trading. So, they lead a nomadic and pastoral life. Nomadic means they don't settle in one, in one place. And pastoral life means they, they, they move from one place to another and they mainly settle down near oasis so that they can get water. Their livelihood mainly depends on livestock rearing, farming and trading. So, the, 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 the earnings say it is mainly depending on livestock, it is animal, on farming and on trading. They rear camels. Goats and sheep. They farm dates, millets and barley, and grain, salt and salt, dry goods, rugs and handicrafts. So they they, uh, they do uh, business with, with regards to camels, goats and sheep. That is, they sell. They, uh, they also farm dates, millets and barley in trade, that is, in, in business, in salt, dry goods, rugs and handicrafts. So they do business in all these uh, uh, animals with respect to these animals and with, the rest, with respect to these foods. Deserts are also the storehouse of important minerals like oil and natural gas. So in deserts we have many important minerals like oil and natural gas which is very much available. It is mined in huge quantities in Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Iraq, Iraq. So it is, uh, it is mined that it, it is mined in huge quantities in many places in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, in Kuwait, in Iran as well as in Iraq. So my dear children, in this way we have completed chapter number 8 of social science for standard 5. For homework, I want you to read and understand this chapter and very soon we will be doing the question answers and fill the blanks etc. of chapter number 7 as well as chapter number 8. Thank you.